to another edition of Law and Business News. I'm Deepak Vora and our special guest is Dr. Manoj Kumar, an outstanding lawyer in India, a distinguished son of our country and a luminary in his profession. He is the founder of an Indian law firm that has a global footprint, Hammurabi and Solomon. Dr. Manoj Kumar, a pleasure to see you smile. The world is looking at the legal profession. Why does Dr. Manoj Kumar, when he is young, decide to become a lawyer? Well, uh, the inspiration uh, has come largely from the great legal luminaries who have led the, led the country since the beginning. Uh, so it was a natural choice for me after my schooling that I had to become a lawyer. I actually didn't think of any other profession that could fulfill my pursuits. And here I am before you uh, uh, as a founder of Hammurabi and Solomon. Well, uh, five years, it's a long time. So, it was a lot of uh, fun, it was challenging, it was an opportunity. Bhi tha. We had a world of a faculty and that's the best thing that National Law School had as a huge asset. I think the best de la cream uh, of uh, law faculty from all across India had just left to come and start the first legal institution in India. So we had a tremendous faculty, we had a tremendous leadership in Dr. Menon. Uh, that apart, the uh, entire setup was a challenge. We started with uh, a few rooms with asbestos sheets, first three years we spent there. So you can imagine uh, all the challenges of in infrastructure. And we kind of saw the university growing step by step and we growing with the university step by step. And uh, now it feels like, yes, we have made the institution as much as the initial faculty has made. That's the kind of connection we have with Alma Mater. Dr. Manoj Kumar, if I want to become a lawyer in this age, forget my age, I'm still very young, I might not look it. <laughs> but tell me that there are three qualities in order of preference. Which one should be to be a good lawyer, to reach your level? Well, uh, I would want to be a little modest about my level first. I mean, it's just... <laughs> you have reached the highest levels, yeah, Dr. Well, Manoj Kumar. Uh, I think there's a long way to go. But yes, the three things that a lawyer should have. Uh, detailing, eye for the detail. That's something that is very, very critical. Determination. You never look back. If you get into any profession for that matter, particularly law, if you take up the profession as your vocation, never ever look back, for even for a second, you'll make it, you'll make it big time. Uh, I for a detail and third, as per the changing times, I think your familiarity with technology balanced with speed. I think law is becoming more and more an issue of managing data and intelligently understanding data. Just like any other profession, it's a knowledge driven uh, sector and it, technology is having a more and more interplay with the profession. You have to that you have to keep evolving. And in Hali, the Prime Minister has announced that there were more than 1,000 laws that were more than 100 years ago. They have changed. Do you agree with that? They have not changed, they have removed them actually. So this was our legacy uh, from the olden times, uh, from the Britishers' times. I think law making ka objective was British ke time, now it's something else. Now maybe the governance is the center focus, center stage, has taken center stage for law making. At that time, control, controlling India and controlling the Indian mind was the center point or the center stage for law making. So law was not made to govern India, law was made to control India. Mm. And therefore it controlled our mindset, controlled our, it limited the horizon of what we could do, what we could not do. And it made life as complicated as possible for everybody who wants to live and do business in India. I was recently in a Western country. I was watching a television channel. There was a discussion on the Indian legal system. So, the anchor was referring to our referring to his own country. He said that our country's legal system is a big deal. It's a big deal. But compared to India's legal system, it is like greased lightning. It's a big deal. I think the uh, reason we have had some very clear initiatives of the government 
to expedite uh, the speed of justice, if you can call it that way. We have commercial courts in place now. Uh, essentially, uh, development, as I said, governance and development is at center stage. So everything that comes in the way of development and governance is being given a fast track. That's the thought. Uh, judicial backlog or the speed of justice is again at the center point. Uh, ability of a contract, to, ability of a party to enforce a contract in India should be very fast, very speedy. Commercial courts are in place. Uh, arbitration Act has been amended. Whoever is following the court system or the arbitration system, either way you fast track it and get over with it between six months and one year. So the times have changed. पहले की ये बातें जरूर थी मेरे ख्याल से उन बातों को अब बाहर तक जाते जाते टाइम लगेगा आई गेस जब तक टिल पीपल आउटसाइड ऑफ इंडिया स्टार्ट नोइंग एंड हैविंग अ फर्स्ट हैंड फील ऑफ इट पहले तो लोग ये भी कहते थे कि कचहरी के चक्कर में चक्कर में बिल्कुल बिल्कुल वो तो एक चक्र व्यू माना जाता था यस डॉक्टर मनोज कुमार अफ्रीका के कई देशों में आप गए हैं मैं भी गया हूं तो वहां पे जो लोग हैं अक्सर वकीलों से मैं बात करता हूं वो कहते हैं कि भाई मेरा प्रोफेसर तो इंडियन प्रोफेसर था इंडियन लॉयर था वी हैव अ ट्रेमेंडस रेपुटेशन इन द लीगल प्रोफेशन डोंट वी इंटरनेशनली यस आई थिंक द द द रीजन फॉर दैट इज फर्स्ट कॉमन लॉ इज लार्जली यूनिवर्सली एप्लीकेबल टू अ लार्ज पार्ट ऑफ द ग्लोब एंड अमंग्स द नेशंस कॉमनवेल्थ नेशंस आई थिंक इंडिया इज लीडिंग एज अ नॉलेज बैंक ऑफ लीगल रिसर्च एंड ट्रेनिंग एंड वी हैव प्रोड्यूस सम ऑफ द best legal brains as researchers and professors who have gone on not only in legal take the harvard business school uh, nitin norey i mean uh, sure. you look all around i mean just today we had this international convention on arbitration and, and five chief justices were sitting on the stage i was so proud to see that the chief justice of uh, singapore uh, was uh, 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 with a, had a indian surname Uh, the chief justice of i think maldives had a indian surname mm-hmm. so out of five it was uh, and, and plus our own chief justice so six of indian origin four were of indian, indian origin apart from bhutan and one other nation it was all just uh, indian surname now that yeah. being the case agar hamare vakeel itne prasiddh hai hamari wakalat itni mashhoor hai aur hamare log itne smart hain to phir dr manoj kumar se poochte hain why was there opposition to liberalizing the legal sector and letting foreign lawyers come into india i think uh, opposition kabhi tha nahi reluctance tha uh, main aapko uh, usko dusre tarike se batata hu stakeholders kabhi kuch bola hi nahi uh, the, the stakeholders have never had a say opposition ya reluctance tab aati hai jab aap sahi kis, usse puche jisko impact karega ye अभी तक क्या हुआ है फॉर द लास्ट ट्वेंटी ईयर्स सिंस द इशू ऑफ लिबरलाइजेशन हैज कम अप देर इज जस्ट वन बॉडी आई डोंट नॉट टू टेक नेम्स बट दिस वन बॉडी ऑफ लॉ फर्म्स एंड लार्जली द गवर्नमेंट हैज बीन कंसल्टिंग ओनली दैट वन बॉडी ऑफ लॉ फर्म्स वेर एज द एडवोकेट साइड डज नॉट इवन रेकग्नाइज एन एंटिटी टू हैव एन एबिलिटी टू प्रैक्टिस लॉ इट्स ऑल इंडिविजुअल लॉयर्स तो हमारे आई थिंक कुछ आंकड़ों के हिसाब से 20 लाख या बाईस लाख वकील हैं इंडिया में और जिनको हर तरीके से इम्पैक्ट कर सकता है उनसे कभी पूछा ही नहीं गया है अभी आपने जिक्र किया कि एक एंटिटी को सरकार कंसल्ट कर रही थी अभी तक हाँ to liberalize the legal sector even though you disagree with it you mm-hmm. use a term which is pretty much meaningless in the legal fraternity stakeholders everybody is a stakeholder i am a stakeholder in you yes. you are in me etc lekin agar ye reluctance tha aur sarkar kuch logon ko consult karti thi jo kehte the ki na aane do what was the justification the justification essentially uh, uh, any any entity or grouping which is because of a commonality of uh, a particular nature of business so it's not a com- the common thread there is not practice of law the common thread there is practice of law as a firm hmm. okay so that's different from practice of law that's why i said the real stakeholders were not consulted that's one secondly even uh, in this entity the people who drive and give the voice are the people who set up that organization hmm. therefore it's it's it that's why i want to avoid taking names but the fact is that it was addressing Uh, the issues which the government never had on their agenda the government never had on their agenda about the implication on the business of a few law firms 
as being the parameter based on which the government will decide whether to allow foreign lawyers to come in or not. That is the that's a change now. Now we have a dispensation which has opened the doors to a completely wider set of stakeholders. And if you see the report that we have submitted, I shared it with you. Uh, the, the stakeholders, the largest stakeholders are entrepreneurs who are doing business in India. You have the Make in India, you have the Startup India, you have Digital India. You are throwing up entrepreneurs by dozens, if not hundreds. They all need to cross the country. They, they all need to do business across the globe by whatever size. And when they need a law firm to consult, that law firm is sitting in Singapore, Brussels, New York, London, and they have to go through an Indian office of an Indian law firm, completely meaningless. It slows down the speed. It never gives the actual advice across the table. Why? On foreign law, anyways, the Indian lawyers are not supposed to practice. That's not allowed. So if a foreign law firm can come and set up an office in India and only advise its own law, if a German law firm can open office in India and advise all the business entities in India doing business in Germany, in German law, who is impacted? Nobody is impacted. But the threat perception of some of the uh, organizations that it could have very huge implications on their uh, talent pool, on clientele, etc., etc. So that's that's the cause of reluctance. Hamad Rabi and Solomon, of which the founder is our guest, Dr. Manoj Kumar, has prepared this dr draft report on the rules for liberalization, so, so to speak. Now take a look at this draft report. We are going to ask Dr. Manoj Kumar to tell us what is contained in this report. Well, the, uh, the uh, report is triggered by uh, a certain draft rules which were brought out by the Bar Council of India. Bar Council has as of now withdrawn those rules, but the process of liberalization, the dialogue of liberalization is on and we are very much engaging with the government to uh, find the best foot forward. And there is a space here, that's what when I mentioned that stakeholders uh, viewpoint, the real people who will get impacted their viewpoint has to come across to the government and that's where we are trying to fill in to uh, you know give all uh, all the possible support to the government so the report essentially uh, is a research paper on the similar uh, issue the, this issue being handled similarly in different parts of the globe how foreign lawyers have been allowed indian lawyers how they have been allowed to practice in other jurisdictions what kind of limitations have been there what have been, uh, they been allowed to practice in and what they have not been allowed to practice in and how it will suit our uh, business, inter our growth interest, our national interest in selectively allowing foreign lawyers to come in on the basis of reciprocity. Now, you have raised two very important issues. One is the regulation and registration of foreign lawyers in India. Dusra aapne ek shabd istamal kiya hai reciprocity. Yani jis desh mein bhaatiya lawyers ko, vakilon ko ye Adhikar hai ki practice kare, unhi desho ke lawyers hamari desh mein aasakte. Is that what you meant? Yes, in fact, uh, uh, when we talk about foreign lawyers ability to come and practice in India, obviously if they are practicing on Indian soil, they have to be answerable to uh, uh, their clients who are based in India and therefore they need to be bound by a certain code of conduct, certain amount of liability in terms of uh, uh, their performance and their advice. Therefore, we need to regulate them and register them. Who the body is going to be, uh, how it will shape up is something that is still to emerge. And reciprocity, yes, uh, any element of uh, allowing a foreign lawyer to come in would essentially be on a country to country basis, on a practice area to practice area basis. Uh, as of now, the discussion is on international arbitration, which anyways is not uh, counted as covered within the Advocates Act. Uh, there have been judgments of various courts, the Chennai High Court, the entry mod of the Supreme Court, which uh, in a way permits uh, international arbitration to be practiced as an arbitrator or as a counsel by a foreign lawyer. And uh, foreign law, that's the second aspect. And third is non-litigious international cross-border trade, for example, cross-border transactions. Dr. Manoj Kumar, one question. We have a lot of respect for the QCs, Q Queen's Councils, or to senior lawyers from other countries. In matters of arbitration, we don't hear too many Indian names internationally. Is my assessment correct? You are very right. In fact, this was one of uh, major issues of discussion today. A law minister was there leading the discussion on this. 
and he very rightly uh, flagged one very important perspective to the entire discussion of how India should emerge as an international uh, arbitration hub uh, is the fact that uh, in, in the larger global ecosystem on arbitration, I think the mindset has to change. The presumption that the white skin is the best arbitrator or the white skin has the right brains for uh, res resolving high stake uh, disputes, that has to change. If we are emerging as an economy, if we are the most favorite spot of the world and we have the best brain in the country, it's time that the international arbitration ecosystem starts accepting Indians as responsible arbitrators and responsible arbitration councils. Dr. Manoj Kumar, you have made a very valid comment about the emergence of India. When we come back, I'm going to talk to you about it. We are talking with Dr. Manoj Kumar, who is the founder of Hammurabi and Solomon, a leading Indian law firm, whose offices are in the whole world. And when we talk about this, about an international conference that is happening in the country of Delhi, its history is 23rd of October 2016, which day we have talked to Dr. Manoj Kumar. Stay with us because when we come back, we are going to ask him about the emergence of India as an important player in the legal field globally about make in India and about the ease of doing business in India. You are watching our new portal, Law and Business News. I'm Deepak Vora. Stay with us. I'm Deepak Vora and today we have our Vishesh Mehman, Dr. Manoj Kumar, the founder of Hammurabi and Solomon, a leading Indian law firm which has a global footprint. He is a distinguished lawyer, one of the best in the world. So we are told, so my research tells me. You want to deny that? Do so. Well, I'll... <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll Dr. Manoj Kumar, now there is a great deal of talk about employment generation, about taking India to an entirely different level. The Prime Minister talks of make in India, start up India, stand up India, Hunar Se Rozgar, many things are being talked about. Does the legal profession have a role to play in all this? Legal profession has a huge role to play in that. Tell us uh, about it. And, and in the India growth story, the way I see it, I think uh, Lawyers and the entire legal system, which comprises of practicing lawyers, judiciary, transaction lawyers, arbitrators, this entire group can be a huge facilitator. It can assist in a big way in uh, making ease to do business in India a, a huge success. Largely, the problems, if you see the World Bank report, we rank 130 out of, uh, I think, 187 in ease to do business. On enforcement of contracts, we are just above about seven or eight countries like Cambodia, etc. Otherwise, we are right rock bottom in that uh, list. So, that entire pain point has largely been with respect to the legal issues. The complications that the uh, uh, investors have found when they come to do business in India from the legal and regulation perspective. And that entire pain point can be removed only and only by the legal profession by fast-tracking uh, delivery of justice, by uh, uh, providing the best legal minds of the world here in India itself in one single place, by uh, providing uh, multidisciplinary support to the clients within the legal advice. Uh, by that I mean uh, project-related special legal acumen and expertise which are located in different parts of the globe to be able to provide everything right here uh, on a single uh, point basis. This can be a huge game changer. Dr. Manoj Kumar, you have now mentioned that in terms of ease of doing business, we are you know, hovering around midway or close to the bottom enforcement of contracts. We are below in the list of countries. Tell us, is this a kamzori niti ki hai or niyat ki hai? Uh, well, clearly, it will be difficult to say that it is not a need. Because some of the people who are making a need are the people who are sitting in such a place where they don't give a need for their need. By that, what I mean is that uh, lawyers become law ministers, law ministers become lawyers again. 
लॉयर्स बिकम जजेस एंड जजेस आफ्टर रिटायर रिटायरमेंट बिकम लॉयर्स अगेन लॉयर्स बिकम जजेस आफ्टर रिटायरमेंट जजेस बिकम आई द प्लानिंग कमीशन चेयरमैन और आर्बिट्रेटर्स और यू नो सो इट इट्स इट्स अ स्ट्रेंज साइकिल दैट गोज ऑन आई थिंक इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट वी के नॉट बी ऑन दिस स्टेटस को एनी मोर दैट्स दी वन लाइन मैसेज and that message has been given in a very very clear way by the present government uh, you know on one side by removing the uh, about 1000 odd laws on the other side by immediately uh, creating a vehicle to fast track commercial disputes by pushing for larger transparency in appointment of in judicial appointments i mean there are a lot of initiatives all of us know about so it uh, the short point is that the status quo cannot continue anymore and it's about time that law is recognize the reality that they have to become facilitators to the national cause of growth and development and not look at their own causes and uh, you know keep a blind eye to the realities all around dr vinod kumar you have been practicing law for some time kabhi aapne is tarah ka excitement passion commitment kisi aur sarkar mein dekha hai i'm sure mere se zyada tajurba aur log hain aap bhi hain you uh, few decades ahead of me Uh, मेरे अपने जीवन काल में uh, इतनी एनर्जी इतनी वाइब्रेंस इतना होप uh, इतनी एक्सपेक्टेशन ऑफ द पीपल इतनी पॉसिबिलिटीज़ को रियलिटी होने की उम्मीद कि हाँ पाँच साल में एक्चुअली कुछ ऐसा हो जाएगा कुछ चीज़ें होंगी कुछ नहीं होंगी पता नहीं क्या होगा बट जेनुनली पीपल गोइंग बैक सेटिस्फाइड एवरी डे नोइंग दैट हाँ कल कुछ अच्छा होने वाला है आई थिंक दैट्स अ बिग चेंज We are speaking with uh, Dr. Manoj Kumar, the founder of Hammurabi and Solomon. Or, as I have heard, he paid me a compliment, saying that I am a few decades ahead of him. <laughs> Biologically, perhaps, intellectually, I am not so sure. Dr. Manoj Kumar, what are the major trends that you see in our country today to make business karna, vyapar karna, ya to use a term dhanda karna to make it easier? वेल well, सबसे पहले एक सबसे रिमार्केबल ट्रेंड जो है वो ये है कि धंधा करना कोई गाली नहीं है वेन वेन यू रियलाइज दैट ग्रोथ इज वॉट यू वॉन्ट ग्रोथ कम्स विथ अ सर्टन अमाउंट ऑफ इकोनॉमिक्स अराउंड इट एंड देर फॉर इट रिक्वायर्स बिजनेस टू बी डन एंड देर फॉर डूइंग बिजनेस इज नॉट अ क्राइम मेकिंग प्रॉफिट्स इज नॉट अ क्राइम आई थिंक दैट्स अ ह्यूज माइंड स्टेट चेंज फ्रॉम द इगालीटेरियन यू नो थिंकिंग प्रोसेस दैट वी वर देयर अर्लियर about how making money is like okay it must be some bad thing that's why he's making money uh, ek to ye change hai dusra hamare har ek actions mein chahe sarkar ki taraf se dekhe ya jo baki stakeholders hai sarkar ko dekh ke wo follow kar rahe hain jo un sab ke actions mein uh, i think uh, consumers and entrepreneurs ye do stakeholders sab ke strategy mein bilkul center stage pe aa rahe hain chahe wo government ho चाहे वो बिजनेस कम्युनिटी खुद हो चाहे वो लॉयर्स की अप्रोच जो लॉयर्स अब देख रहे हैं रियलिटी चाहे दूसरे प्रोफेशंस भी हों कॉस्ट अकाउंटेंट्स हो गए कंपनी सेक्रेटरीज हो गए चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट्स हो गए को हर कोई चाहता है कि वो अपने डोमेन को बचा के रखे और देश तो डेवलप हो ही जाएगा पहले मैं अपनी करियर आगे बढ़ा लूँ इस इस अप्रोच से जो अभी तक चल रहा था आप हर एक किसी के एक्शंस में देखिए सब जगह आई थिंक एंट्रप्रनोर एंड द कंज्यूमर are coming to the center stage everybody now wants to be seen as acting with transparency acting with uh, you know uh, with a certain vision in mind acting with good governance where have all these words come from they all taking you to making ease to do business whether it's media i mean take any regime take any kind of a industry you want to pick every industry association every different different uh, sector related industry association everybody is competing to say i am more transparent i am more transparent i am more transparent that speaks volumes kuch logon ka ye kehna hai visheshagyon ka ki from the time of independence almost till a few years ago the last person in the hierarchy of preference was the consumer whereas in western countries wo kehte hain the consumer is king is king ab wo badal raha hai hamare desh mein bilkul ab ये जितनी भी इनिशिएटिव्स मैं खैर सरकार का स्पोक्समैन नहीं हूँ ना ही वो जगह लेना चाहता हूँ विदाउट इनविटेशन बट आई थिंक नीति वहीं से स्टार्ट होती है uh, जो भी इनिशिएटिव्स गवर्नमेंट के पिछले दो साल से आप ये देख लीजिए कि सारी इनिशिएटिव्स चाहे वो मेक इन इंडिया हो चाहे स्टार्टअप इंडिया हो डिस्ट्रप्टिव बिजनेसिस की हम बात कर रहे थे टेक्नोलॉजी को एक चांस देने की बात कर रहे थे 
दैट इवन द टेक्नोलॉजी जिसको हम सिग्निफिकेंट मटेरियल नहीं समझते हैं उसको भी एक अपॉर्चुनिटी मिलनी चाहिए हर एक को अपॉर्चुनिटी मिलनी चाहिए डिजिटल इंडिया देख लीजिए कि एक गाँव में छोटे से गाँव में सरपंच या पंचायत के रूम में अब डायरेक्टली असिस्टेंस गवर्नमेंट एक जो आज का रिजीम है कि डिजिटल वहाँ तक पहुँच गया है कि एडवाइजर्स कहीं दिल्ली में बैठ के बॉम्बे में बैठ के किसी गांव में कुछ समस्या है वो किसी डिपार्टमेंट से जुड़े हैं तो उनको पंद्रह दस पंद्रह मिनट में उसकी सोल्यूशन मिल जाती है ताकि वो इम्प्लीमेंट करे चाहे वो बीच को लेके हो चाहे कुछ भी लेके हो सड़क को लेके हो लाइफ इज कम्प्लीटली चेंजिंग एंड इट्स ऑल अबाउट द कंज्यूमर विदाउट बींग द स्पोक्स मैन ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट एज यू सेड मोमेंट टू गो गिव अस क्रिटिकल एनालिसिस अभी भी कमजोरियां कौन से इलाकों में हैं एंड वॉट वुड यू लाइक टू सी द प्रेजेंट गवर्नमेंट एंड द एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन फोकस ऑन वेल कमजोरी तो मैं नहीं कहूँगा आई थिंक बिकॉज अल्टीमेटली मेरे समझ में डेवलपमेंट uh, में सबसे बड़ा uh, भागीदार या स्टेक होल्डर कॉमन मैन है ये हमेशा से माइंड अलग से अंडरस्टैंडिंग रही है कि गवर्नमेंट इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर डेवलपमेंट आई थिंक द डेवलपमेंट हैज़ टू हैपन बॉटम्स अप यदि इसको कमी कह सके तो या कहीं हो सकता है हमारे आंकड़े या हमारे पास समझ में कुछ कमी हो गवर्नमेंट हैज़ टू एंगेज एंड कंटिन्यू टू एंगेज मोर एंड मोर एंड मोर विथ डायरेक्टली पीपल एट द बॉटम ऑफ द पिरामिड एंड टेक द डेवलपमेंट प्रोसेस बॉटम्स अप फ्राम देयर डिजिटल इंडिया आई एम इवन एट द कॉस्ट ऑफ नॉट बींग एबल टू क्रिटिसाइज आई थिंक डिजिटल इंडिया इज़ अ रिमार्केबल इनिशिएटिव ऑफ डायरेक्टली रीचिंग आउट टू द लास्ट मैन ऑन द स्ट्रीट एंड आस्किंग हिम वॉट एग्जैक्टली यू वॉन्ट एंड हाउ कैन आई हेल्प यू आई थिंक गिविंग गिविंग द पावर दैट ही हैज़ इन द फोन बियॉन्ड जस्ट एन एबिलिटी टू कॉल बट टू एंगेज विद द गवर्नमेंट टू एंगेज विद द गवर्नमेंट विद द राइट डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट विद इज प्रॉब्लम्स आई थिंक दैट बॉटम्स ऑफ अप्रोच शुड बी ऑल अक्रॉस कटिंग अक्रॉस ऑल अदर डिपार्टमेंट्स If it should be it 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 should be taken as an inspirational process how they would achieve it uh, i don't know but if the day that is a, uh, the, the day that happens by every department that touches the lives of people whether it's health hrd education etc the day they able to achieve that i think we have made it big time the world is changing dr manoj kumar india is changing perhaps faster than ever before in its post independence history does the legal profession need to change is it changing uh, there are two questions rolled into one <laughs> here <laughs> so i'll nevertheless address it one by one yes there is a need to change for the legal profession i think the kind of support that legal profession is expected to give to the growth story the legal profession will not be able to give unless legal profession is given that kind of a regulatory support by the government for example Uh, to be able to handle complex transactions the large number of lawyers have to get together and make firms and uh, that's one side of the story and without that the transactional advice will suffer and therefore the uh, transactions uh, concerned with growth will suffer and therefore the growth might be, uh, get delayed on the other hand the advocates act does not even recognize a law firm as an entity to practice the government took all these steps and passed the llp act that you know you can organize yourself in a brilliant way but we have a bar council which does not recognize a, a llp as having a, a limited liability limited liability partnership so these kind of gaps uh, also the ability of law firms to be able to reach out to the real consumers to tell them who is good and what those days are gone that every lawyer does everything but those were the days of single lawyers and the law practice is all about court practice and therefore everybody would practice everything and the lawyers would would be found in the premises of the court so if you had a legal problem all you have to do is walk it across to the civil court and you will find one of the uh, 200 black uh, gown people to help you but today in a far more complex environment you need lawyers with different skill sets mm -hmm. somebody is a telecom expert somebody is a oil and gas expert somebody is a a uh, infrastructure expert somebody is a consumer expert uh, somebody is a policy and regulation expert like us we have been at the top for 3 years now now for the consumer who needs different different kinds of advice we should be able to reach out to the consumer not everybody needs a policy and regulation support but i should have the ability to reach out to the people who are stakeholders in the policy and regulation space 
who need legal support there to tell them that we are the best, here we are, this is what we have done, this, this is the national awards, uh, rather international awards we have got for three years, we beat the rest of the legal fraternity in India, three years in a row, hat trick, but I can't do that because mm -hmm. that would amount to advertisement. So, you know, some gaps there and when we are pitted against the international law firms, when they come in, it will be like our hands are tied and they have a free flow. So, that, that's where the fear perception is coming from. Uh, Dr. Manoj Kumar, one question is about the growth story that you have talked about, we have talked about, Bharat Sarkar, which is today, under Prime Minister Narendra Bhai Modi, we talk about the growth story. The world recognizes it. In your way, is this growth story in the cities or is it spreading across the heart of India? I think, uh, uh, शायद इसका closest reference NDA one का हो सकता है India shining की जो एक perception थी जो कुछ और निकला जब elections हुई I think this time around uh, the the way the engagement is happening आप uh, strategy देख लीजिए शायद uh, चाहे वो banking को inclusive बनाने की बात हो जो government का financial या non financial support है उसमें inclusive बनाने की बात हो इस government की effort जो दिख रही है हमें from outside Effort is to directly connect and reach out to the last person, the actual beneficiary and share the benefits there. That includes sharing the opportunities. Uh, inclusive uh, development, inclusive strategy may chances of a gap or uh, chances of development being limited to the uh, cities are very low. Now, the rest is, I am sure, some research is going to happen. But the efforts that you see, the strategy that you see, it seems that it is reaching out to possibly the last mile. Dr. Manoj Kumar, thousands and thousands of crores of people are listening to you and my story, listening to you and seeing you. There are many young people who want to adopt the legal profession as a career. Would you encourage them to do so? Yes, I think this is the best vocation you can ever think of. The legal world needs you. We need the best of talents. I can assure you that although we have something like 22 lakhs odd lawyers, um, I think there is a huge space for committed, talented and uh, completely uh, uh, people for people with ability to go into details. There is a huge amount of space. Now, this was addressed to young people looking for a career. Those who already, those who have entered the profession and are studying, what do you think are the major sectors in the legal profession that will be the growth story of tomorrow? Yes, so uh, I think uh, if, if I can straight away get down to sectors or specific areas, arbitration uh, is an area, alternate dispute resolution, I think that's where uh, India's uh, heart and soul will lie in terms from the legal sector perspective. I think there is a huge, 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 tremendous opportunity there. If India has any story that we keep on talking about the growth story or the India story, if India has a story, the story uh, will go hand in hand with the arbitration story because the pace of development will get determined by the quality of dispute resolution setup that we have. Uh, any kind of development has uh, transactions and co contracts or engagements between multiple stakeholders. So there are bound to be disputes and if we get stuck again uh, the way we have for the last uh, so many decades into a legal system which is not able to respond and provide speedy resolution, I think it's a disaster. So I'm sure that's not going to happen. There's a huge amount of energy being put towards making India an international arbitration hub for the entire region. Why go to Singapore? Why go to uh, any other place for that matter? So that's, that's an area where a huge amount of work needs to be done and come and work there. Is integrity in a lawyer an important quality? I think without integrity, you can't go very far in the legal profession. I and mean, whatever the perception may be, uh, uh, the fact as a professional now, uh, with two decades behind me, I can tell you that uh, without integrity, you cannot go uh, far as, as a career. You'll get lost somewhere. You'll always be employed. That's fine. Uh, there are enough people who are getting employed. And uh, But as a professional, integrity is a must. Hold on to it. Never compromise on integrity. 
हम लोग बातचीत कर रहे थे विद द फाउंडर ऑफ हमूराबी एंड सोलोमन डॉक्टर मनोज कुमार और इनसे बातचीत करके तो ऐसा लगता है कि ये उन लोगों में से हैं हम सब लोगों में से हैं जो अपने हाथों से इस देश की तकदीर लिख रहे हैं ताकि कोई दूसरा ना लिख पाए लेट्स आस्क हिम फॉर हिज लास्ट वर्ड वेल माई लास्ट वर्ड वुड एसेंशली बी दैट नो मैटर वॉट आर प्रोफेशन इज वेदर वी आर लॉयर्स इंजीनियर्स डॉक्टर्स ब्यूरोक्रैट्स जर्नलिस्ट आई मीन दिस इज लॉन्ग लिस्ट ऑफ द वोकेशन दैट एग्जिस्ट इन इंडिया आई थिंक दिस इज द मोमेंट हिस्ट्री इज गिवन टू अस we are standing today in a position that we can change the way india uh, has been for uh, the so many decades and what india can be tomorrow this is the moment of change it's before us let's look beyond let's look above our own considerations let's look for the nation let's focus on the nation if the nation grows every profession will grow every man on the street is going to grow everybody will grow so for this moment we need to come out of our immediate concerns about how our uh, issues in our professions are and we need to address even our issues from the national perspective if you were to be born again which country would you like to be born in india always and what profession would you like to adopt lawyer <laughs> always <laughs> <laughs> dr manoj kumar what a pleasure to yes. talk to you i yes. sense the emotion i sense the passion thank you for agreeing to talk with us thank you very much indeed i'm deepak bora aur hum jo baat cheet kar rahe the with the founder of hamurabi and solomon a leading law firm in india which is now an internationally recognized legal company we've had a wonderful chat with him about the legal profession about modifications liberalization that is taking place in the legal system in india aap dekhte rahe hamara karyakram because we have many more exciting conversations coming up i'm deepak vora and you are watching the law and business portal